the Rice Creek Watershed District presents Blue Thumb, Planting for Clean Water. The Blue Thumb program will help you design native gardens, create rain gardens, and stabilize shorelines using plants. Go to blue-thumb.org for garden blueprints, a plant selector tool, and participating nurseries where you can purchase these plants. So how do plants help with keeping water clean? The magic is really in the long roots of native plants. This picture demonstrates why native plants help with water quality and are often preferred over ornamental plants or regular long grass. Many native plants have tremendously long roots, sometimes extending down 16 feet, as compared with regular turf grass roots circled on the left, which only go down a few inches. The long roots of many native plants control erosion decrease soil compaction, and find their own water extremely well, whereas regular lawn grass has very short roots and is basically on life support relying on frequent irrigation. You see, planting for clean water reduces our number one water pollutant, storm water runoff. In natural landscapes, rain soaks into the ground gradually. However, nowadays, much of the land is covered by impervious surfaces such as streets and parking lots, so the water runs off rapidly through storm sewers, carrying pollutants collected along the way directly into our lakes and rivers. Yuck! However, native gardens, rain gardens, and shorelines stabilized with plants help by mimicking nature's processes and filtering out contaminants. Now let's get started with our how-to overview movie about stabilizing shorelines using native plants. Native plants generally refers to the plants that would grow there naturally before settlement occurred. Native plants provide erosion control in two ways. First, aquatic plants serve as a wave break, absorbing some of the wave energy before the wave even reaches the shore, preventing shoreline erosion. Second, the plant roots anchor the soil in place. Green grass growing right up to the lake isn't desirable for water quality because when grass clippings fall into the water, it's like dumping fertilizer right into the water and one pound of phosphorus equals 500 pounds of algae. Native plants also help keep geese away because they feel vulnerable to predators amongst the taller vegetation. This helps our lakes by reducing the amount of fecal matter and bacteria entering our waters. Native critters depend on native plants for food, cover, and habitat. If you plant it, beneficial pollinators and other wildlife will come. Did you know aquatic plants actually help keep lakes clean and healthy? These plants take in nutrients like phosphorus so there is less available to fuel midsummer algae blooms. And through photosynthesis, aquatic vegetation gives off oxygen for the lake and fish. So what do native plants look like? I want to dispel the myth that native plants are just weeds. Remember, the definition of a weed is an unwanted plant. In some gardens, roses might be considered weeds. Native plants are beautiful and are as maintenance free as a plant can be. There's no mowing so that cuts down on air pollution. The EPA estimates that about 580 million gallons of gas is used each year just to mow turf. And the average homeowner spends about 40 hours per summer mowing. What are you going to do with your spare time? After the plants are established, they don't even need to be watered. Their long roots make them very self-sufficient. They don't need chemical inputs such as fertilizer or pesticides either. And perhaps best of all, they cost a lot less to maintain. The Blue Thumb Program has a list of participating garden centers online. Please go to blue-thumb.org. If you are interested in a wider variety of plants, 
than what is offered at these participating store locations, please see our resources section in the planning packet. You can get that planning packet online also at blue-thumb.org. There are hundreds of native plants to choose from, suited for sunny or shady, short, tall, or in between, wet soils or dry soils, in all sorts of colors. We do have some plant lists online. But to further assist you, we have an online plant selector tool where you can enter the sun exposure, soil moisture, as well as color and time of bloom preferred, and a plant list will be tailored for you. To view the plants, simply double click on the Latin names. Let's look at the project steps. First, you need to kill the grass and other unwanted plants in the area you are going to plant. This will make for a lot less weeding in the future. There are a number of ways to kill existing vegetation. However, the fastest way is to use an herbicide. But remember, a permit is required by the DNR Fisheries for using herbicides in or near the water. Permit information is online in the planning packet. Go to blue-thumb.org. Notice that the dead vegetation is not removed. It can be planted right into and prevents erosion until the new plants are established. A biodegradable coconut fiber erosion control blanket is used on the slope over the loose soil. Finally, coconut fiber biologs or fiber logs are used to protect the toe or the bottom of the slope. The biologs are not submerged. The next step is to plant either right into the erosion control blanket or into the dead vegetation. Planting small plants called plugs is generally recommended for large plantings to save on costs. The plants will be established in a growing season or two. Next, put down a layer of shredded mulch about 2 to 4 inches deep on the flat areas, not at the water's edge. A cordless drill with a tulip bulb planting attachment is very helpful in digging the holes. These attachments are very inexpensive and are available at most hardware stores. When planting your plug, make sure that they're not root bound. Put the plugs into the hole so that the top of the root ball is level with the ground. Then firmly press in the soil around the root ball with your fingers. This will get out air pockets and stop the root ball from drying out. Now let's look at some more examples. Before, during, and after. This planting was done randomly to give it a very natural look. Some plantings are done in groupings to give it a more English garden look. There are benefits to both methods. The natural planting is very easy to plan and to plant. Also, if the plants are hit with diseases, chances are they won't spread and kill all the type of plant because the pathogen or insects won't necessarily find the other plants. The drawback to this method, however, is that it is very hard to weed unless you know your plants extremely well. Mostly, it just comes down to a person's taste. This project is in Arden Hills before, during the planting, one month after, and just one year after. Once again, before, during, notice erosion control blankets are in the transitional area and biologs are placed at the toe of the slope, while snow fencing was tried out as a wave break. After several tests, it was concluded that snow fencing is not recommended as an effective wave break. Brush bundles, not shown in this picture, or just biologs work better as wave breaks. To secure the biologs, stakes are pounded in every few feet on both sides. This is the project three months later. Here's another example before, during. Biologs are used at the toe in this project, but no erosion control blanket is needed because there is very little slope. After. Here's another example with a much steeper slope. Two tiers of biologs are used here. One is to level off the steep slope, and the other is used as the wave break. Also, erosion control blanket is needed on the steep slope. Then the area is planted. Notice how you can plant right into the biologs. This is just three months later. Here you can see that biologs and brush bundles were used to protect the planting. 
Here's another example of site preparation. The upland has shredded mulch. The transitional area has an erosion control blanket. Brush bundles are at the toe with bio logs out in the water. Here are some additional ideas of ways to protect your project. You may want to consider a no wake buoy. Add a sign to educate your neighbors about the benefits of a buffer area. If carp and geese are issues for your project, you may want to put up some chicken wire or snow fence. Remember to water and weed. Once established, native plantings take little care. You have more time to relax and enjoy your lake. Now that you have a general idea about how to stabilize your shore using native plants, you can go to our website for more specific information. Print off the planning packet from blue-thumb.org. The planning packet walks you through the project steps of getting permits, assessing your site, defining your goals, designing the project, estimating your costs with an online cost calculator, site prep, planting, maintenance, and additional resources. Garden centers selling native plants are listed on our website and are also listed in the back of our planning packet. Thanks for watching and have fun with your new blue thumb.